Hi dear guys and girls, welcome once again. Um, today I wanted to speak on how to avoid repeated relationships with narcissists. And uh, I think this is a very important topic um, because once you leave a relationship, let me just turn that a bit, once you leave a relationship with a narcissist, um, or maybe this is something that you have seen in your own life, that at some point when you re-enter into a new relationship, that it is once again with a narcissistic personality. So I would like to, you know, um, help you to see where you may at a subconscious level be repeating certain destructive patterns um, that gets you back into a relationship with a narcissist. Now these patterns start from a very early age and they are continued. They are passed on from generation to generation. So whatever you learnt from your parents, realize that your parents learnt that from their parents and their parents learnt it from their parents. So you see, it's a whole pathological way of being and way of showing up in relationships and interacting. So whatever you have learnt, you will pass on to your children. Your children will pass it on to their children. So it is a continuous cycle. And I feel at some point someone has to stand up and take responsibility for bad relationship patterns, break that cycle and redefine new patterns in order to create healthy and loving relationships, not only for yourself, but one that you are going to pass on the dynamics of that relationship. You will pass on to your children and your children will then pass it on to their children and so on. So I just want to start by saying that it is, you know, I feel that everyone deserves a loving, healthy, warm, friendly, kind relationship. And when it has been your life pattern to continuously be involved with a narcissist or even be in a very long term relationship with a narcissist for 20 or 30 years, then, um, you know, at, at some point you will get so disheartened and you will be so broken down from all the abuse and intimidation and manipulation you will just long you see that breathing there you will just long for a soft relationship that you can sort of fall into and uh, enjoy with every fiber in your body so what you're actually longing for is a mature kind of love and not the child love that we experienced in our youths and in our childhood so i would like to take you through some points on how this started at a subconscious level and what you can do to change this in order to change the behavior patterns that you may be experiencing now in your relationship with the narcissist if you are just out of the relationship i would say allow yourself time to grieve because any relationship, whether it is a normal relationship or one with a narcissist, every single breakup of relationship is painful, it is devastating, it is especially excruciating when it has been a relationship with a narcissist, as all of you know. So when you want to change, when you realize that you have to change something in your behavior or in the way you show up in the world, you know, you must realize that there are always two people in a relationship and only one of you can change. And that one is you because you are now sitting viewing this video and maybe you have looked for other topics on this very or other videos on this very topic on YouTube or on the Internet um, because you are searching for answers and you want to know how to break the pathology of destructive relationships so you are the one who has to uh, take charge stand up tall and implement the change so to back it up a bit back into our childhood usually at some level we subconsciously attract partners into our lives who represent the good or the bad qualities of one or both of our parents and we do this because we are looking to heal 
the childhood wounds that have been inflicted on us and I'm not talking about um, physical wounds I'm talking about emotional wounds that we may have experienced as children and that we are bringing into our adult life uh, which causes us to enter into relationships with narcissists now I did do a video on this a few days ago about why do we attract narcissists and this is just a um, this is just one small section of of why we do this so I hope that that video helped you um, a bit but now in this video I want to go a little bit deeper into uh, why we keep attracting narcissists why do we keep repeating the same patterns so once again we subconsciously at some level it is not always applicable but at some level level we subconsciously attract the good or the bad uh, qualities of one or both parents so by doing this we try to heal the emotional wounds inflicted on us as children once again just repeat that because that is so important to get so for example if your father was a very controlling man if he um, was very uh, dominant in the relationship you know in, in the family unit then you will find that these are the kinds of partners that you attract into your life um, if your mother was very um, codependent if your mother was very laid back and very timid uh, was used as a doormat you will find maybe as a man that this is the kind of woman you will also attract into your life but this is speaking in general of, of general relationships but when we are talking about um, relationships of narcissists then you have to realize that maybe I'm not saying this this is for everyone but maybe um, you know one or both of your parents were narcissists and they exhibited this kind of behavior so to you it is a normal it is something that you are accustomed to it is not something that you um, you just don't know any better so you will repeat the same kind of relationships that your maybe your narcissistic parents also had um, so this is your comfort zone when you attract bad relationships this is also your comfort zone because you don't know any better and this represents love for you this is your definition of love when entering a relationship with a narcissist and what is even more important is when you maintain these relationships and you just don't know how to break free from them and how to make a different choice for a new relationship so once again you are looking for mature love because love with a narcissist is void it is not an authentic love it is not a mature love it is a hurtful kind of love and i'm saying that from the narcissist point of view because of course there is no such thing as a hurtful love only in the mind of the narcissist is um you know that there is the the dynamic of a hurtful and false love but that is not where you uh, are coming from that is not the place that you need to be heading to so when you realize what you want in a relationship that you want all the good stuff the healthy stuff the kind and the kindness and the friendliness and the true intimacy um, you have to change that pattern and you must realize that change is not a quick fix you cannot just suddenly decide to flip the switch and say well I'm not gonna go for a very healthy relationship it doesn't work that way um, you need to realize that change is a process and change takes time it takes willingness on your part it takes a whole lot of commitment it takes understanding um, of yourself that is truly the only thing really you don't have to understand the other person as long as you understand yourself so these are the kind of things that it takes for you to achieve um, your wish of being able to change your relationship patterns um, your need for for love and attention and validation affection recognition um, are very important in any relationship 
So what happens when you are in, um, you know, going back to your childhood, when you are interacting, when you interacted with your parents and you had this controlling father, you know, that we used as an example, um, every time he would put you down, every time he would try and dominate you, you as a child would try harder and harder and harder to gain his recognition, to gain his love, to gain his approval. And what do you do when you are grown up and you are in a relationship with a narcissist? You will keep trying harder and harder and harder to gain the recognition, the validation, the love, you know, all the things that I just um, mentioned. So... I'm, I'm just trying to, by telling you this, trying to show you what you did, your your um, patterns as a child and how they are intertwined with your patterns as, a, as an adult. To implement change, you have to raise your standards. You have to put on your big girl panties or your uh, big boy britches and you have to stand up and be willing to make that change yourself. So raising your standards and owning the fact that you are deserving of everything good, that you will no longer tolerate bad behavior, that you will no longer tolerate abusive relationships, that is raising the bar, that is raising your standard. And you need to first raise it for yourself. And by raising it for yourself, you will be showing, you will be showing your new partner how to treat you. Now this is a very important thing because when you are always operating from a very low level you are going to attract low energy in the form of a narcissist and I'm talking about you know their negative energy is anything but low. I'm talking about their true energy that is their true energy is way up there and it is very destructive. So you are going to be operating at a very low energy level but as soon as you raise your standards, you will automatically raise your energy level, raise your vibrational level, and that is going to get you to attract someone on the same vibrational and energetic level. So I'd like to share a couple of tools with you in order to implement this change in your life, because once you become conscious and aware of what you have been doing all this time, um, why you are maintaining narcissistic relationships. And I realize that maybe some of you watching right now are still in a relationship with a narcissist. You don't know how to break free. You feel that you are not worthy enough to break free. You feel that maybe you do not deserve to break free. So you will just continue along in this relationship it takes away from your value. It um, it brings you to a level of just sort of you know living on automatic pilot. You are not living from from richness and fullness and love, not only for yourself but also for for the other person, for the people around you, for your family, your friends, your children. So you will be living an automatic pilot. So what is really happening is that you are living from your heart your heart has well i'm just going to go ahead and say it your heart has stopped beating so you are functioning from this level from a mental level but you are not feeling your life energy your heart that is what i mean by by this and, you know, I think that is why we are all put on earth to be able to operate from a heart space. You know, of course, it's good to use your mental space as well, but it has to be in combination. Your heart and your mental state need to go together. And when you are operating or living only from your mental state and there is just no any no no emotion anymore and no loving feelings that all these feelings and emotions have been um, deadened by the narcissist you get to a point where you just you sort of throw your hands up in the air you know it's surrender and you think well this is the kind of life that I was uh, destined to live that is just not true it is not true you are not destined to live under the wrath and under the dominance and under the control of a narcissist 
So when you have been able to come out of this, just realize that you are the one who needs to make the change. You are the one who needs to set the standards. You are the one who needs to say, this is as far as it goes. The buck stops right here because I am no longer willing to tolerate this kind of abuse. I am willing and I am making the commitment to myself to implement love and value into my life space and into my heart. And by doing so, I am going to attract that one warm, loving person into my life. I wanted to share four change tools for you, or with you. So, number one is be clear. Be clear about what you want and what you need and do not settle for less. Just do not settle for less. Remember that standard, the bar? Raise that bar and don't settle for anything that falls under the bar. So you need to become clear about what is it you really want. What are your good qualities? What are your values? What do you bring to the table? What is, you know, you need to recognize your 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 self-worth. You need to start respecting yourself. And that starts, you know, how, how do you respect yourself? How do you have self-love? That starts by recognizing your good qualities. That is where it starts. Because they have been so taken down by the narcissist, you don't remember, you don't recall what your good qualities are and uh, the loving parts of yourself. You have just, you are lost because that is what the narcissist does when he gets into your mind or she gets into your mind. Um, they totally rob you of your identity, of your self-worth, of your self-respect. And it is up to you to regain that. So that is tool number one. Be clear. Be clear about what you want and do not settle for less. Number two is that you need to express these feelings to your new partner. Maybe you are at a stage in your life where you have, where you have just re-entered into a new or, or entered a new relationship. You need to be clear up front about what you want from a relationship, what you are willing to give and what you uh, want to receive as well. This needs to be, you know, these are people enter into relationships without discussing what their wants and needs are and what their values are. They just sort of blindly go in and when things don't work out, um, the blame game starts. No, I feel that, you know, the same as when you are entering into a marriage, um, you you lay out the groundwork you know uh, whether you want children you know um, what countries you want to travel to you know how you want to be treated you relay how you are how or you show how you are going to treat your partner you know these are all important things finances are discussed um, where you're going to live is going to be discussed what whatever you know all these dynamics of a good and healthy relationship are discussed before you get into the marriage and so it should be the same when you are entering a relationship now i'm not saying that you know on your very first date you are sitting across from your new partner and you will just blab out what you expect from a relationship that is not what i'm saying give it some time so when you realize that yes i do have feelings for this person and it is mutual and you feel that you want to embark on this relationship then have that conversation. Sit down and tell. Express your wants and needs to your new partner. So give it some time. Don't blurt it out on the first date. Um, number three is you need to stop being responsible for your partner's health, for uh, their needs, for their growth. This is not up to you. You do not have to be responsible for this in your partner. The only person that you are responsible for is yourself. So, you know, I realize that being a, uh, an empath, you tend, or a caregiver, you tend to want to help others out so much. You want to be responsible for how your partner's feeling. You want to be responsible for um, the way they are taking care of their health. 
uh, and, and, you know, their growth, their spiritual growth, their personal growth. It is not your responsibility. All you need to do is take responsibility for what you put into the relationship and how you um, uh, nurture your personal growth. And by doing that, you know, then you can serve your partner. You can uh, give your partner from your overflow and not from your lack. That is what I'm getting to. Give from your overflow. You know, see it as a cup or a glass that has been filled with water. If you just put a drop of water in that and you give your drop to someone else and there's nothing left for you. So if you keep pouring that water in to the point of overflow, then the overflow is for the partner and you will still have enough left to give to yourself. And what I mean by the overflow is, of course, the, the love and the, and the encouragement and the um, self-confidence and self-respect. That is, that is the content of your glass. My fourth and final point is that it is so important to change your mindset from lack to love. When you are operating from a lack, you will find that you will only receive lack. As in the relationship with the narcissist, you lack everything on a mental level, on an emotional level, on a physical level. It is all about lack. And that, of course, has to do because the narcissist is void. They have nothing real to give you. They only have an illusion. To give you so change your mindset from lack to love and how to do that you know once again this is a personal individual process if you feel that you would like to be coached by me then please feel free to send me an email and I offer four to six weeks of coaching on a well literally a daily basis in order to get you from a lack of love to an overflow of love. So I leave that up to you. That is what I offer. It is also about self-respect and it is about uh, changing your belief system. It is about knowing yourself. You have to get to the point where you know yourself. If I ask you that question now, who are you? Can you answer that? And I'm not talking about, hi, I'm Petra. I don't want to know your name. I want to know who are you? What motivates you? What moves you? What gets your juices flowing? You know, what are you passionate about? Um, what are your, what is your value? What does your value system look like? What are the places you want to see? Where do you want to go? What do you, what do you want to experience? You know, this is how you get to know yourself. So once again, the question do you know yourself? And if you don't, if you feel that you are searching for an answer to that question, then this time that you start working on the relationship with yourself in order to be able to give and receive real and authentic love. That was it for today, once again, guys and girls. And if you have any questions, please pose them in the comment section or send me an email. And uh, please tell us your story. Tell us how maybe um, you have seen how there is a pathological pattern of bad relationships in your own family unit. And if you would like more information on this, then once again, please feel free to email and I will do a one-on-one -on -one with you and you can, you know, doing this, we can come to the absolute bottom of things and uh, flip your world around to, um, to a loving place. Thank you once again for watching and uh, see you all next time. Bye for now.